Hi there, welcome to my channel. Stick around so you can see how I made these compact but really well weighted mats. I made two larger mallets probably about this time last year uh, but I wanted a much smaller compact mallet um, for light chiseling and furniture assembly really. Though it was small, it had to be well weighted. That was really important. So I fired up Fusion 360 and got to work designing it. I also thought whilst I was there, I may as well draw up the other two mallets so I've always got the plans for reference in the future. I ended up deciding to make two mallets. One out of American Purple Heart and one out of, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, Chicate Preto. I routed out a section of the inside of the outer cheeks of both mallet heads. Uh, this would enable me to actually fill those voids with metal shots to increase the weight of both heads. I filled the remaining space in the voids I created with resin. This really was a case of I didn't want there to be any weaknesses in the mallet heads themselves and a void would be a weakness. I used a product called Liquid Gravity. This is essentially it's very small metal pellets. Um, I wanted to use the smallest pellets I could find because this would leave less space which results in greater mass. Once the resin was mixed thoroughly I poured it into the void to fill up the rest of the remaining space that was left. I poured a bit, put some more weight in, I poured a bit more, put some more weight in, kept doing that so I knew I was getting as much weight in there as possible. I left the resin to cure for a couple of days. I then weighed them. It turns out I pretty much added nearly 100 grams to each cheek, which is, you know, that's a great result. All four pieces were then cleaned up on the belt sander just to remove any resin that shouldn't be there. I needed to cut the cheeks very close to their final dimensions. Um, I had to be very careful once I was once this was glued together because I needed to make sure I didn't actually go into the void that's got the resin in. By getting as close as I could now, that sort of meant once it was all glued up, it would probably only need a small amount of sanding just to get them to the perfect dimensions. Both mallet heads will sandwich a piece of maple. This maple will also form the mortise for the handle to attach to the head. So that the sandwich pieces of maple could form actually form the mortise, I had to make some spacers. Uh, these spacers needed to be thinner than the actual maple pieces that I would be putting in. This would mean that at, once the mallets were all glued together, I could actually remove them. These spacers mean that when I actually glue up, the, the shape of the mortise won't change, it won't distort. I wrapped both spacers in sellotape and then used um, super glue with, uh, with an activator spray just to tack them in place whilst the glue dries. Because of the, uh, the spacers being thinner than the actual sandwich, when I actually come to taking them out, they should tap out very easily. I then actually drew round the cheeks with the spacer in, which gave me the size of the pieces of maple that needed to be cut out. I made sure that they were oversized. I could then trim them back once everything was glued up. Once the maple centres were cut out, I then labelled everything very clearly so that on glue up there would be no confusion. I wanted to try two different types of glue. So we've got Evo Stick Time Bond Contact Adhesive and we've got Type Bond 3 which is a resin based glue. Both of them incredibly strong. I thought as I was making two mallets, I'd try them both out. 
for the Chicato Preto mallet head, I decided to use the contact adhesive. The contact adhesive requires you to spread it onto each surface and then leave it a few minutes whilst it becomes touch dry. Then you press the two surfaces together and it's kind of instant. Uh, the Type 1 3, I use that on the Purple Heart mallet. That acts as a normal wood glue. Spread it on and then it requires clamping for a few hours. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, I had cut the outer cheeks to really close to the exact size to avoid going into the resin at a later time. This did mean, however, when it came to gluing up, I had to be incredibly precise that both cheeks were aligned. Um, I did this by, as you can see, I drew lines as reference points and used the engineer squares to aid glue up to make sure everything was flush and this would mean minimal clean up once the uh, once the glue had cured. Both glues advise that full strength is achieved in 24 hours being mallets I, I didn't want to risk that so I left them clamped up to 24 hours After that time, I took them out of the clamps to see see how it was. These Axminster HD parallel clamps are brilliant. They, they, they give such force if you need it. It's now time to tap out the uh, mortar spacers, as you can see, nice and easy. Once they slide out, what's left behind is a perfectly tapered through mortise, which will accept the tenon on the handle brilliantly. As you can see, I'm using one of the mallets I made last year. Yes, these mallets are very pretty mallets, but they do get used. And um, at this stage, I could already already feel that the head had a nice weight to it. This one's slightly lighter, but still, it's got a good weight to it. I cut off the excess maple and then just used the belt sander to uh, take the heads back to the exact dimensions that are required. It's at this stage that you actually get to see how they're going to start to look. Very pleased. You'll uh, also notice that I, on the outer cheeks, I uh, book matched the grain. It's just it's aesthetically pleasing. Both mallet heads, um, every outer edge needed to be chamfered. Two purposes really. One, it feels nicer to hold. And secondly, you, you don't end up chipping a huge chunk off the corner if you just you know hit something too hard at the wrong angle. So I used a, a, an easy scribe just to gently mark all the chamfers. And also on these mallets, I intended to put a leather insert on one end of each mallet for aid in assembling furniture. I use my Veritas marking gauge to mark out the leather recesses. This would make clean up later on, well, a lot easier. You'll also notice I didn't use the marking gauge or for marking out the chamfers. It's because because you end up having to remove much more to remove your marking gauge lines. Then on to just using the palm router just to take that recess down by a few millimeters. I got the router as close to the mark lines as 
as I was comfortable with and then just use my chisel just to take it back to that line for the sort of final cleanup. I struggle to grip tools with my right hand so this shoulder plane especially this Veritas shoulder plane it, it fits in my hand perfectly with minimal grip um, and it does the job brilliantly I struggle to hold block planes the main thing you have to be careful of here is tear out when you're going on the corners especially when you're going across the grain so with the end grain I generally come in from both directions and then flatten off the center this just avoids any any tear out because that, that would ruin ruin how the mallet looks I then brand wood scrape into one of the uh, faces of each mallet using this electric branding iron from a man called Von Hank. I think you find him on Etsy. Excellent, excellent bit of kit. After this was done, it was a final sand up to remove any excess marking lines and uh, blemishes. I'd forgotten to uh, order sandpaper and couldn't get any, so I had to uh, improvise. Using Fusion 360 again, I printed out a one-to-one -one scale drawing of the handle, stuck it to some plywood, and cut it out on the scroll saw. This was to actually create a negative, um, which I could then use as a template whilst turning the handle on the lathe. Good lesson learned. Don't rest your camera on the workbench when you've got the scroll saw on it. I was given a piece of seasoned apple. Um, it had fantastic grain pattern and colouring, so it went on the lathe and I uh, got to work. Once I've made a tenon and fist it in the chuck, I could then turn it safer um, use the roughing gouge just to get in there and take off all those edges all those corners get it back to a really nice smooth cylinder as the apple becomes more cylindrical and balanced it then allows me to speed the lathe up I love how wood turns I had a set diameter of the, the largest diameter that the handle needed to be, so that was the first task: was get the get the blank, the apple blank, consistently down to that diameter across the length. I used the template to uh, mark out the specific points on the handle itself, and then use my spindle gouge to. Uh, Start making the uh, the rough shape of the mallet head. Check in as I went along with the template that things were staying in the dimensions I required. I think I need to work on my camera angles for the next time I'm uh, filming myself on the lathe. Once the handle was nicely shaped, I then concentrated on getting the tenon down to the largest diameter I could get away with so I could still cut the, the tenons later on. I had to be careful here. Um, if I took off too much material here, the tenon would be rounded at the corners, which would leave big gaps in the corners of the mortise on final glue up. So, nice and slowly back to the the diameter required. Next was a quick sand. 
Just get any rough rough surfaces off. Wasn't much really. The design was to uh, put a brass pipe in the base of the handle so I could fit a lanyard. Um, as the hole was so close to the end of the mallet, I started with a pilot hole and just worked my way up to a 10 millimeter, uh, 10 and a half millimeter drill bit. The uh, brass pipe was then epoxied in place and I took it over to the grinding wheel just to take off any excess brass that was protruding from the mallet. Then back over to the belt sander to uh, put some hand grips into the mallet handle itself just to make it easier to hold and they serve as a reference point for when you pick up the mallet and you're not looking. I got it down to the rough shape that I, uh, I had planned. Just taking small amounts off and then remounted it back on the lathe as it was a good aid to, to hold the handle whilst I was, I was sanding it off. And then I just got my bowl sander on it. Um, it's such an efficient sander with the lathe. It, it's a really easy job. I then put an initial coat of Woodwax 22 by Chestnut Products onto the handle. Um, to see how the grain came out. It gets uh, just gently rubbed in and then the lathe is uh, fired up uh, and it's, it's just buffed with a bit of blue cloth. I think you'll agree that the grain pattern in this handle is absolutely fantastic. It looks amazing. Really, really pleased with how that's come out. Next, cutting the tenons on the bandsaw. I think I would probably do this by hand next time. I think it'd be more accurate. Um, mounting the piece on the bandsaw was an issue. Uh, as you see, I had to improvise slightly. I then used a handsaw to remove the cheeks from the tenon um, as I didn't want to risk marking the shoulders of the handle. As you can see, down to the rough dimensions and then my trusty shoulder plane to clean up the tenon itself and the shoulders there look important that has to be if you want the handle to sit brilliantly on the base of the mallet that shoulder needs to be clean there can't be any high points on that so just to clean up to get it to the the actual perfect tenon dimensions You'll notice the two holes I've drilled near the base of the tenon. As this is a wedge tenon, when I drive the wedges in, if those holes aren't there, you potentially split the wood further down the handle. So just marking out the uh, slits. Then I double-sided tape the tenon to a small offcut just to ease going through the bandsaw. Again, I think I'll cut this by hand if I did it again. So final glue up time uh, using type on three as you can see and it's just a case of getting the glue into all the nooks and crannies in that mortise. Uh, you'll notice I've put blue tape on the bottom. This is so that when it's all glued up any glue squeeze out will be on the tape not the handle and especially those small corners of the handle which could be hard to clean up. Then with the tenon itself you see it's a case of getting that, that glue in all the nooks and crannies really get it in there. Um, some Chicate Preto wedges again more glue on those 
and then it's it's really a case of slotting that handle into the mallet head um, again fits nicely and then the wedges are pushed into the slots just get them started at first and it's key here to make sure they're even and they go in evenly this gives a cleaner effect at the end and as you see using one of my mallets I made last year to tap those in nice and evenly a bit of a clean up from any glue squeeze out and a final tap down make sure those wedges are nicely home once the glue are cured, remove the excess material from the top of the mallet and then just gave it a final sand off. Back to a 240 grit. Nice and clean. For the final finish I decided to use Chestnut's buffing wheel. Uh, it's a three stage buffing wheel that finishes off with carnauba wax which gives an amazing shine, really amazing shine to the uh, to whatever you apply it to. I really love it. You just work your way up through the three different stages and then like I said it finishes with the carnauba wax on a very very soft buffing cloth. This one here. Lastly I'm adding the leather end that's going on one end of each of the mallets to aid assembly. You know so you don't actually damage or dent the wood when you're tapping it together. The leather is cut to size, and I then glued it in place with the uh, the contact adhesive. Very quick, very efficient. I'm really loving the weight of this mallet and the way it sits in my hand. It's perfectly sized. Uh, for chiseling, small light chisel work, like cutting dovetails, things like that, and assembling and assembling furniture. So here's the final pieces. The Chicate Preto Mallet, this one here, came in at 280 grams. Decent weight for such a small mallet. Really, really pleased with how that turned out. Really pleased. And this is my favourite one. No, the, the grain pattern on the handle is just, I think it's beautiful. Really beautiful. Um, it weighs 300 grams, this mallet. And as you'll see, I put the uh, a small leather lanyard on each of them. I thought the leather tied in nicely, obviously, with the leather end of the mallet as well. Very pleased with how these have turned out. So here they are, the family of mallets. Two small, one medium, one heavy duty. I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, my building process here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've watched, please subscribe and press the like button. I'll see you again soon.